Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, and I have a very special guest with me, my own son, Borach. Borach, welcome to the Jewish View. Thank you for having me. Well, besides having Borach as a, a new television star, he does have a very interesting story. He's a student, a senior student, and he was uh, what we call a foreign exchange student, and uh, in the Lubavitch, well, maybe I'll let him do his talking, but he was sent to Sydney, Australia. His friends, like I was saying, really not only went to Sydney, Australia. He had friends all over the world. You know, maybe tell us about where all his friends were. So in any case, Borach, when we start off, and uh, tell us about the, generally the Lubavitch program of what I was just saying about... Uh, having everybody, all these students all around the world and give me some addresses, not their street addresses, but some cities where they they were sent and of course the purpose and the mission why they why they were sent there. Well in the Lubavitch system of schooling you have six years of schooling and and afterwards they send you out to help out other programs around the world and other communities. So I was sent to Morristown, New Jersey um, and in Morristown, they sent out to many communities, to South Africa, to Berlin, to Sydney, and even place, most places in the U.S., actually. And I got selected to go to Sydney, Australia. Um, what you're supposed to give back to the community is the point of this yeshiva community, of giving back to the programs that you've gone to. So, all right, so g tuning into yourself, what, uh, Sydney? now it's very interesting because sometimes I have people come from, the, you know, even visiting, I remember once in even Vermont, and people never go to these communities, and if they do, they don't even know if there's even Jews there, number one, and what kind of Jewish community there are, number two. So before saying what well, your mission is, tell us a little bit about the history, a little bit of the Sydney, Australia. Obviously, it's halfway around the world. Hopefully it didn't fall off the end of the world there. And um, how many people have ever gone to Australia, so they really don't know, and they don't uh, really know anything about the Jewish community, how big it is, how diverse it is, what's over there. We talk about a lot of things, the kosher food, how do they kosher food in Australia, the schools. Give us a little bit of a, a brief story about what the Sydney Jewish community is. Well, the Jewish community over there, you have to really go back to how Sydney and Australia came about. I think it was around uh, a little before 1800 that it finally got settled by white colonists. And there was Jews on the first ship. Um, that's documented of convicts. Some were convicts, and I think even there were some that were, um, some were uh, soldiers. And they've, they settle down in Australia. And that's kind of the original, um, you have up north of Sydney in Newcastle, the first shul, um, Jewish shul, which was founded around 1815. Um, and that was the original Jews came from there. But after mainly World War I and World War II, there was many an influx of Jewish, um, not convicts, but um, refugees from Europe and Poland, and actually mainly Hungary. There's a lot of Hungarian Jews. And that kind of set in motion when Chabad, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe um, sent down uh, different emissaries and different rabbis to help out the Jews that were refugees. Um, and you really have that, if you come with that understanding of how Australia was formed and how, you know, more it became an international, you know, more of a country um, on the international stage. Um, you can kind of understand the Jewish community over there. Um, the, the Jewish community is kind of still developing. It's more, it's more um, after the uh, English and South African, the more, you know, Commonwealth countries, more than the U.S. style of Judaism, where they have a centralized Jewish, centralized synagogue and all the synagogues are really part of the same um, organization and that organization is orthodox and so even though people are not necessarily orthodox they all go to mainly go to orthodox shuls synagogues so 
just so there's a more of a traditional now like I was saying before traditional Jewish life is dependent on of course kosher food what kind of Jewish person doesn't have so much food so how do they I mean again you're halfway around the world and either our food is local New York and New York area New Jersey or from Israel you see a lot of kosher food what, what are they eating in Australia the meat for example well the kosher food is it's still developing and the rabbis in Sydney that are in charge of the in kashras um, are still trying to get more companies to get on. They're kind of a little 50 years behind the U.S., I would say, where there's not so many companies actually signed on to certification of, the, um, of kosher standards. And the, um, a lot of the stuff, like it is imported in from Israel, as same as here in the U.S., a lot of it is imported from Israel, and a lot of it is imported from the U.S. But you do have, I mean, it's developing still. The, the meat is very good meat, and meat is very cheap there, kosher meat, actually. Meat in general. I mean, there's, there's a lot of sheep in Australia, more than New Zealand, actually. Um, and so lamb is very cheap. Lamb chops are very cheap. And that's actually an interesting thing. Even though the kosher, the kosher is not very developed, the meat is actually ahead, really, and the pricing is very good and all that. Um, the dairy, the dairy, they just actually opened up a new goat cheese. I just found, I went, in the last couple of weeks I was there, they made it in Adelaide. There's a farm in, farms in Adelaide, um, which is Midwest, or center Australia and they ship it down then to Melbourne and Sydney the two Jewish communities Sydney's more of actually a traditional community it's not really very ultra orthodox Melbourne's much more orthodox and so even what you have you have a lot more restaurants kosher restaurants and kosher bakeries in Melbourne whereas in Sydney there's only you know a couple handfuls of kosher restaurants and kosher bakeries so but so everything's accessible, bottom line. I mean, you can have Yeah, your, it's, all, it's all there. It's you're not. all eating over here. You're not starving over here in Sydney. <laughs> yep. Does they do import? I mean, it must be very expensive. I mean, again, it's halfway around the world from, from America or from Israel. There is only one true kosher grocery, and that kosher grocery imports most of their stuff. About three-quarters of their stuff what's, is imported from the U.S. What's the pricing? The I pricing mean, is very imagine. expensive, but... You have to take into consideration... Like a shopper like me, I'm always thinking about what the prices are. Taking into consideration that pricing on all goods are more expensive, the cost of living is much more expensive than the U.S. So that, Even I mean... an example of different things over I there. mean, gas is about probably, if you translate from liters to gallons, about six and a half, seven dollars a gallon. Um, and in general, the cost... Um, I didn't... I was a student, so I didn't really feel it that much. But the um, to make do for, and f to make do for someone with a couple of kids in the area that I lived, you have to make about eighty thousand dollars. I mean, that's kind of average. You mean like average? Yeah, eighty thousand dollars, which is a lot higher than here. You know, and so the and the cost of living is much higher also. So, on top of that, the kosher food's even more expensive than that, than your in the average price hike so yeah it is it is quite expensive <laughs> well sometimes you know like people make more money and yeah you know the whole average is higher now again tuning into your mission uh, being in sydney australia tell us more about you know the school and what you were helping out with different kids well i was actually in australia for two 10 month stints and um the first 10 months i was with um, 14 other boys my age and part-time studying on our own and part-time actually helping the community and that there was different kind of um, different groups different um, things different that you levels, can do yeah. different levels you could there's many things in a Jewish community to work with there is, you can work with uh, adults, learning with adults, you know, Jewish education, 
develop Jewish education or more basic Jewish education. You can develop, you can do teen programs and anything, the after school programs and and actually dealing in school programs, you know, extracurricular activities. And uh, you could work with very young kids and do programs on Shabbos for on, in synagogue and you can do different, all different, the, you know, you have so, there's not that much structure. So uh, you really could pick what you want to do and take it and run with it and develop it and have an effect on people, which is not in every community can you do that. Yeah, because everything already structured, they don't need the students to come in and mm -hmm. do too many things. So tell us about the students you specifically worked with. So I personally worked with, I took on teens. It took me a while to you know, settle down in that area, but it kind of found me. I've, teenagers and working with teenagers, doing a summer camp and a winter camp and um, doing, doing a after school programs and just kind of being a little of a guidance counselor and the in-between between their parents and them. So a lot of that, which was quite interesting. It was, it was a lot of fun. Some of it was hard and some of it was fun. Um, looking back, it was, I gained quite a bit from it. But that was a, it was an amazing experience. So what kind of kids, I mean, are they like, well, you say they're a little bit different than American kids, but, you know, how would you describe the uh, Australian Jewish youth? I mean, are they that different or the same problems? And I haven't really dealt with, I mean, youths or teens, and in, in, I know from my own friends and when I was growing up, but it's not that much different. The main difference is, like what I said before, is the infrastructure, is that there isn't that much infrastructure. Even it's a different schooling system, and they have a different summer and different, uh, uh, different winter breaks and summer breaks, it's all, they, they split it up a lot more. In between semesters, they take two-week breaks, as opposed to in the U.S., where they don't take that long. Um, and you have, in the summer, there's only a six-week break, as opposed to our two-and-a-half-month more break. So it's very different, and the in infrastructure to help out these kids, not only in the Jewish community, is kind of lacking. Um, not really sure why that is, but it is. And there's, there's sometimes, uh, you know, little hiccups where, you know, there's somewhere for s someone that is a, uh, a youth counselor can step in and help out. I mean, one of the cases I dealt with um, I was a very close friend. I mean, I become friends with these teenagers, not, you know, just a strictly business relationship style. I became very good friends with a lot of the teenagers, a group of 15, 20 kids in Sydney. And one of them was going through a bit of a hard time. And, you know, just working with psychologists and working with the parents and being the in-between, it was a, a learning experience for me. So uh, talk about some examples. I mean, obviously you don't give names of people, but I mean, tell us about some of your interactions with these teenagers. Well, we, we, we were, um, me and a good friend of mine, Abby Roskin actually, he, um, we were sitting around discussing, you know, what was happening and how it was about nine months since we got there, eight months since we got there. And he turned around to me, he's like, there's no winter camp. You know, they have two weeks, these kids, and there's not much for them to do. They either could be counselor in day camps, you know, it's, we're talking about 15, 16, 17 year olds. So he turned to me and said, what did you think about making a winter camp? This is a month before the winter, a month and a half before the winter. So I Just said, saying the winter and the summer. Well, yeah, it was. It after was, the southern hemisphere. It was July, <laughs> let me say. <laughs> See, if they describe that around here, July yeah. is no winter camp, but all right. So he turned to me, this was in June, early June, he turned to me, what do you think? I said, you're crazy. I said, you know, yeah, there's a lot of things to figure out, you know, transportation, where are you going to do it? He wanted to make an overnight winter camp. So he's like, he started bouncing ideas off me with me dragging my heels a bit. 
and we, then I got into it and we decided that we were going to make a couple of days a day camp more where they go home at the end of the day in Sydney and, and then we were going to go down south a three and a half hour drive to Canberra and then outside Canberra two hours there's two hours out south west of Canberra there's snow mountains and many of these kids have never seen snow never been in freezing conditions uh, below below it's freezing just, uh, I mean maybe to tune in not that I know that much about Australia altogether but I mean I always think of it as uh, you know it is an island so you think some little dinky island but what is Australia it's just almost as big as the United States I think it's like two-thirds the size two-thirds it's very big so you think of some little little island you know an island what's an island you know well a few miles by a few miles but you know so they're obviously just like United States you go from freezing cold to Miami Beach to the it's one country so obviously Australia is a big country also well most of the um, actually civilization may I say is around the coasts wherever it is it's around the coast it's not right in that big outback in the middle so even Perth which is on the west coast of Australia um, is you know it's right on the water and Adelaide's on the water you can go through all the big cities really around Melbourne, Sydney, Newcastle, which is where I went for Passover this past year. Um, not a big city. Um, Brisbane, Darwin, um, Townsville. Any of these cities are on the coast. So you kind of, even though they're far away, Perth is, I think, a seven hour flight from Sydney. Um, you know, they're on opposite sides. It, even though they are far you know Melbourne's 10 hour drive from Sydney and you have you know Brisbane's another 10 hours north so it's far but they're kind of all I mean you have Sydney mm -hmm. Melbourne they're all kind of so we went to Canberra which is three hours they kind of they made a, a compromise supposedly as the tale goes to where the capital of Australia should be Sydney wanted it and Melbourne wanted it so they and they made a compromise and they put it in the middle there's nothing happening in Canberra <laughs> Absolutely nothing. You know, a couple of museums and the mint. But we, there's some beautiful science museum. So we spent Shabbos um, over in Canberra, which was a lovely, the 